on a current carrying wire, we basically have a bunch of moving charges. Rather than single charges, many charges all moving in the same direction. We already have a couple of equations for current. Let's start with the most basic one, which is the equation for average current. Eugen? You gave me the one for instantaneous, I asked for average, you changed it, so delta Q over delta T. As you recall, we have something that looks like a lowercase n. Lowercase n is called, like, uh, it is called, Emily? The charge carrier density, the dimensions in the charge carrier density are something you had to find on the test. <laughs> charge carrier density dimensions, some people forgot, believe it or not, Travis. <laughs> Winter? Per unit volume is correct, but it wouldn't be coulombs, it would be charges, right? In that particular case, it was electron density, so it would be electrons. Here is just whatever charge we happen to have, so it would be the charge carriers. So this is technically called charge carrier density. So the charge carrier density would be in terms of charges per unit volume. So if we take the charge carrier density, so uh, charges per volume, if we take the charge carrier density and we multiply it by the volume, we get what? Class? Number of charges. Number of charges. Okay. The number of charges, if we multiply that by uh, Q, we get what? The charge. So this is equal to charge carrier density times the volume times the charge divided by delta T, right? Because this is just the charge. Well, we know that the volume is going to be equal to the cross-sectional area multiplied by however far they've gone, gotten, multiplied by the charge. So I can just replace the volume with the area times the displacement. That means the current is equal to the charge carrier density multiplied by the cross-sectional area multiplied by the drift velocity times the charge. And we just decided to review deriving that just for fun. <laughs> no, you just, just mostly not, didn't do it. That, not that particular. You didn't do that one very well. That's okay. So we come back to the magnetic force is equal to Q V cross V. This was for a single charge. But we need to look at it in terms of many charges. So we need the total number of charges on the wire. So if we take N times V, again, the charge carrier density times the volume, this will give us the number of charges. Uh, this volume is equal to the cross-sectional area multiplied by L. Now, L is the length of the wire. No, what we did before was we just talked about delta x, which was just some amorphous, I don't know, displacement. Now we're actually referring to it as specific. It is the length of the wire. So if we want the magnetic force on the wire, we're going to take and multiply a single charge, QV cross V, multiplied by the total number of charges on the wire, which is N times the the charge carrier density times the volume, or the charge carrier density times the area times the length of the wire. So we multiply this through by N A times L for the charge on the whole wire, rather than just a single charge. So if we multiply through, we get the magnetic force is equal to, uh, we, this, these are all scalars, so we can multiply them through by any one of these. So let's just do Q V times N times A times L cross B. What's that? 
which is showed that that is the current. In other words, the magnetic force on a current carrying wire is I L cross B. Where B is your vector and L is your vector. So the L is the length of the wire. The wire itself has a length and that length has a direction. So this is the magnetic force on a wire. Um, I don't think we've ever answered that. It's a silly. Yeah, it would be the direction of the conventional current on the length of the wire. And we're going to go through some examples of that just to make sure I do understand that the L is a bit weird. So we come back to pictures. We have a current carrying wire at the moment. Not a current carrying wire, it has zero current. It's in a magnetic field you can see is into the page. If the current were going up, figure out the direction of the force on the wire. Please. Right, it should be to your left. So if current is going up, the force should be to your left. If you switch the direction of the current, if the current is going down, the force is going to go in the opposite direction. So you will get the force would go to your right. Okay. 